Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today we're going to be talking about stars, how to have big stars, little stars, or even no stars. And we're going to be focused primarily in Photoshop. So what I wanted to do today was explore different ways of handling stars to get the, the star presence that you find ideal. So I'm, I'm not here to say there's a right or a wrong answer to this. What I want to do is give you the tools so that you can get to what you think is the best way to approach it. So I've already done the basic processing of this data of the Wizard Nebula. And I have it open here in Photoshop, but I've gone through kind of my basic process in PixInsight. Of stacking the images and then creating starless images of the narrowband data plus the RGB data. And what I have loaded in Photoshop uh, are the layer groups you can see over here on the right. And just looking from the bottom up, at the bottom I have some RGB data and it's fairly dark but I'm using that as a little bit of a foundation. And then on top of that I have sulfur and that's color mapped as red and then oxygen, and that's color mapped as blue. And lastly, hydrogen, and that's color mapped as green, a little bit towards yellow from pure green. And then some um, luminosity data from hydrogen, uh, some sharpening, and global adjustments. So that gets me to this starless image. And then, as usual, at the very top of the layer stack, we have the stars. And I actually have two stars images here, and we'll talk about those as we go further. So to start with, in the stars layer group, I have the RGB stars, and this is kind of the way they came out for my process, although I did apply um, the blur exterminator and blur exterminator in correct only mode, uh, run spectrophotometric color calibration. So these are kind of the the probably the true RGB stars uh, as they would come out of the process. You know, underneath, I also really liked the stars that showed up in the hydrogen data. They were the, the smallest by far. Uh, but of course, because they came from a monochrome camera with a hydrogen alpha filter, there's no color to them. So you've got, you know, initially you've got two choices. You've got the uh, just the plain uh, black and white monochrome stars from hydrogen alpha. I also have the RGB stars which have the correct colors based on spectrophotometric color calibration but they're quite a bit larger and I feel like the, the abundance of stars really obscures a lot of the detail in the nebula at least to my eye. I, it just kind of obscures the, that fine detail. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a couple things we can do to start with. Uh, I have a levels adjustment layer sitting right on top of the RGB stars. And of course, using an adjustment layer, it affects everything below the adjustment layer. And because this is in a layer group in screen blending mode, that's how we put the stars back in, this adjustment layer is only going to affect the things below it in this layer group, so it won't have any effect on the background. So if I turn on this levels adjustment layer, and here's the property panels for this levels. If I move the midpoint slider, this will make the stars darker, and of course smaller stars are darker stars. So one immediate control I have is I can just reduce the brightness of these RGB stars and cut back on the their effect and you can really see the the background a lot better when I do that. So that's one approach to managing star size. Uh, I might also want to increase the color saturation as what I find happens when you take RGB stars and you put them on, on top of a fairly colorful SHO background, which I would consider this a, a pretty colorful background, uh, they start to look less saturated. So generally I need to find I need to boost 
the saturation overall of the stars. So this is adding, let me just reset this tool. So I typically would add global saturation to the stars. And that starts to bring out more of the yellows and blues. <clears throat> a lot of times the, there's red that is too strong. So I will usually target the reds in this hue saturation adjustment layer and then reduce the saturation of the reds. Of course, you could also adjust the hue or the brightness. Uh, I find usually just reducing the saturation is sufficient. And then usually I will target the cyans and increase the color hue of the cyans towards blue. And since blue is a darker color than cyan, that has the effect of both darkening <clears throat> and taking some of the green out of the cyan and making it more blue. So that's two changes that I would make to the color. And then when we work with the levels, uh, for the most part, we can just adjust these stars to, to suit whatever size we want. Now, another approach, I mentioned that the hydrogen alpha stars uh, look really nice. The small stars are nice and tight and small, and, and that's pretty typical for narrow band stars. <clears throat> An ideal combination might be to have the size of the hydrogen alpha stars but the color from the RGB stars. Well, in Photoshop, we can do that very easily. If I turn this RGB stars layer on, and right now, if I look at the blending modes, right now, this layer is in normal blending mode. And blending modes just control how a layer interacts with what's below it. <clears throat> in other words, how it blends with what's below it in the layer stack. So if I change this layer blending mode, and if I just click the drop down next to the word normal, there's all sorts of blending modes, and there's one down here near the bottom called color. What that does, that takes only the color from this layer and applies it to the luminosity of the hydrogen alpha. So in effect, what we have is the, if I just turn this layer off and on, you can see we have the star size from the hydrogen alpha but we have the color coming from the RGB stars. And that gives us a nice kind of midpoint, uh, you know, not doing much in the way. In fact, I can turn off this levels adjustment. That's without any levels adjustment. <clears throat> if I turn this back on, that's, we, and we still can control the size of the stars, but it gives us a more natural look to the stars than just darkening the RGB stars. Uh, one thing that you find is if you focus on the like the diffraction spikes around some of the bright stars, um, it retains those diffraction spikes better. So this is starting to give us a very nice balance of stars. Um, and we have the color from the RGB stars. We have the hue saturation intensifying that color so it doesn't get washed out. If we want to go even further, uh, if we look at the, the details here, you can see there are a lot of little stars. And sometimes it's the little stars that are distracting more so than the big stars. <clears throat> the traditional tool that you would have used to knock out stars and to create a starless image before the, the AI tools came along was the dust and scratches filter. Now, normally applying a filter like that would be destructive. It actually changes the image and I want to do everything non-destructively. So what I'm going to do is take these three layers, the hydrogen alpha stars, the RGB stars, and in fact the levels adjustment layer that's giving me this result, and I'm going to just select those three layers, right click, and choose convert to smart object. Once it's converted into a smart object, uh, Photoshop basically encapsulates those three layers into one smart object, and I can now apply filters non-destructively. So if we go to filter, noise, dust and scratches, and probably something like three or four, let's do four, a radius of four pixels. What that means is it's gonna look for things with a radius of larger than four, and it's gonna treat those as a defect and take them out. And you'll find the preview is not particularly accurate with this tool. 
but that's with the dust and scratches filter applied so it knocks out the little stars if I turn that filter off that was before that was after so it had very little effect on the large stars it really just takes out the small stars and as long as you keep your radius in that uh, I'll say two to five uh, pixel range of course it depends on the uh, your camera and the resolution of your camera. Uh, it doesn't have much effect on large stars. <clears throat> if you feel like there is some softening of the larger stars, we can also add a uh, Smart Sharpen filter to this, and that will restore some of the crispness to those stars and also kind of sharpen up the uh, diffraction spikes. So that gives us, we still have the, the stars, uh, but they're just reduced a little bit. Uh, we've knocked out the little stars. Uh, we still have a nice range of size from large to small, but it's much easier to see what's going on behind the, the image. Uh, now, if we want to take this even further, which you might, you can, of course could add a levels adjustment layer again and again clamp down on the stars a little bit by darkening them but what I find is that you really start to erode into the diffraction spikes and they start to look unnatural if you go too far. Now if you are so inclined that you you like the effect it has on small stars but not the effect it has on large stars <clears throat> this adjustment layer does have a layer mask and we can use our brush tool just tap B for the brush tool I want to get my default colors with black as the foreground and white as the background and I want a hundred percent opacity and I'll make the brush small so it's about the size of this bright star here and if I paint with black on this mask that will hide the effect of this levels adjustment and restore that large star uh, and restore the diffraction spikes and I might want to go around and do that here and there to some of the stars that I feel you know got eroded too much uh, this is really getting away from you know maintaining the integrity of the original data so you may not want to do something like this and, and it's entirely up to you of course this is this is art you're the artist uh, you can decide what's right for you and uh, approach it however you feel is the best way for you to approach it I'm just showing you tools that you can use and of course if you want a starless image we just turn the stars off and we're back to our starless image as we started this is all completely non-destructive I can turn off this adjustment layer I can turn off these smart filters uh, to go back. Uh, I can even, because I have some of it encapsulated in this smart object, if I double click on the smart object that will open those encapsulated files. So for instance I could turn off the levels adjustment, turn off the hydrogen stars, so we're back to just the RGB stars, and then if I close this image and say yes, update, it's going to update that smart object with those three layers arranged and turned on like this uh, and that will take us back to the original image with just the RGB stars uh, we do have the hue saturation if I turn that off that takes us back to where we started and if I decide I do want to go back to where I was again I just double click on the smart object Turn these layers back on, close it and say yes, update, and we'll be back to the uh, hydrogen alpha stars with the dust and scratches and the smart sharpen. Uh, if I want to have a little bit less effect with the dust and scratches, uh, I can just double click on that filter as the smart object, and it will reopen that filter with the settings I had. We were at 4 pixels. If I go to three pixels, click OK. Now it's going to update that filter and everything else and give us a, um, 
a less aggressive view. So one last thing that you might uh, find interesting to do, and that's to add a little bit of a, a fuzzy glow. And to do that, I'm going to select the stars and this adjustment layer again. And again, I'm going to turn this whole pile into a smart object. And now I'm going to add another filter. And this will be a blur, just a plain old Gaussian blur. And I usually find around two pixels works really well. And again, that's with the, uh, the resolution of my cameras. Now, you don't really see much of a result, and that's because we need to change the blending mode of the filter itself. To do that, I'll double click on the little adjustment lines over here on the right, and that will open the blending options for this smart filter. And I'll change it from normal to screen. And usually I find I dial back the opacity to somewhere in the 70% range. And that just creates a little bit of a soft glow around the remaining stars to give them a little bit more presence. So if I turn off that was without the, that's with the filter. Uh, if I want to make it a little more aggressive, I could go from two pixels to three pixels. And I just double clicked on this Gaussian blur to change the filter. I feel like that's a pretty good balance. We've got the color from the RGB stars. We have the sizes of the HA stars, and then we've applied some filters and some levels adjustments to reduce the presence. And then at the end, we came back and added a little bit of a fuzzy blur around the stars so to keep them from getting too sharp. So hope you found this useful. Those are just some of the ways you can deal with stars in an astronomical image. Uh, the right amount of stars and the right look is really up to you. Uh, my goal here is just to give you some tools that you can use in Photoshop to kind of corral the stars into whatever size and shape you want. Uh, hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, be sure to drop those in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks. Uh -huh.